This video is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the Dragonfly range of USB DACs. Click to audioquest.com for more information. I hope you've enjoyed this flight bus today. I'd like to thank you all for choosing to fly the EasyJet Europe. I wish you safe onward travels to your final destination. Thank you very much. So I have just spent the last month in Lisbon doing some remote working. Remote working, people called it a vacation. It wasn't, I was still working whilst I was there, shooting videos, editing videos, doing stuff on my website. But also whilst I was in Lisbon, I went CD and record shopping as I do in many of the cities that I visit because when you go record shopping in a city, those record shops are usually in sort of odd or out of the way places. Most of them are so that you get to go to areas that you might not otherwise travel to. The first store that I visited was right slap bang in the middle of the city center, about a 10 minute walk from the Rua Augusta Arch. And it's actually on some steps that interconnect two main streets. And the store is called Louis Louis. And it mainly sells, well, it's, it's a mix. It's a mix of new and secondhand vinyl, new and secondhand CDs. It's not the smartest store in the world, as a lot of these stores aren't. But the guys behind the counter were super friendly, super helpful. Not that I really needed help because I only bought a few things in there. The first things that I kind of spied were these. These are the Smiths Best 1 and 2 from 1992. And if you're looking for a compilation of Smiths work, you can't go wrong with these. Although I think it was Warner's or WEA at the time did, didn't feel the need to make them a double CD. It was two separate releases, I think, to milk the market, to be honest, like this. Now you should get these over and above the Sound of the Smiths compilation that popped up about 10 or 15 years later for one reason, sound quality, because these came out before mastering engineers decided that smashing the dynamic range against the wall was a good idea to make things pop on the radio. These are not dynamically compressed, these two. And the sound of the Smiths compilation is heavily compressed. I also bought this. Now, I know everyone's seen the, the, the vinyl LP version of this, and I have it, but I'd never seen this on CD before. Neil Young's Decade. So this is a three LP set normally with a brown sleeve. Here we have a white sleeve. I'm sure it's brown. There we are, there we are inside there. Double CD. The mastering on this is excellent. And as with all Neil Young album covers, it's a stinker. Horrible. Lastly, I bought the rather uninspiringly titled Talking Heads Remixed. And I got this because it compiles all of the remixes that I spent quite a lot of time, money, trying to track down in my late teens. This is my favorite band of all time. And not all the remixes are that good, actually. And they're mainly from Talking Heads' 80s releases, probably from Little Creatures onwards. But there's some great remixes of Blind on here. There's a 12-inch mix of Nothing But Flowers. There's Television Man, Love For Sale, two versions of that. And I didn't have them on a CD, so that's there. The, the sleeve also is pretty crap. But I think the mastering on this will be fairly decent. I, this is pre brick box set where that was a bit too loud so this should sound pretty good next store I visited was literally just around the corner from Louis Louis, like down the steps and there it is. And you can't miss it because it's bright yellow. And it reminds me a little bit of JB Hi-Fi in Australia, which is also um, like a, a Best Buy kind of store that's bright yellow. So this store, if I can, actually I'll find the bag, is called 
Tubby Tech. Bit of an odd name, but it's a much more attractive store. It only sells new CDs and vinyl, but the the selection is really, really good, especially if you're into sort of alternative indie rock. There isn't very much electronic music there, but there are some very nice box set displays at the very back of the store. Whereas down the middle, you've got like a big chunk of CDs and a big chunk of vinyl, and then vinyl down this side, and I think CDs down this side. But the thing you notice, or you should notice when you visit, are these big stone arches, which according to the guy behind the counter, are uh, the remnants of the building before, which was actually burnt down in a fire in the 80s. The store is brand new. I don't know whether that building has sat there since the 80s untouched, I've got no idea. But it was a really nice place to go and buy new stuff as a whole bunch of discounted CDs. I did buy, here it is, on the first, because I went twice. On my first visit, I bought a spiritualized album. This is sort of indie, psychedelic rock, mainly sort of, yeah, it's quite an aggressive album. It's not as sort of, majestic or as overblown as the album that preceded it, Let It Come Down. This is more of a sort of straightforward rock and roll album. But it was only five euros, so I thought I'd grab that because I don't have that on CD. But on my second visit, what did I buy? Oh yeah, I found this little gem. This is a reissue, repress from an album that came out in 95. Many people at the time were asking, you know, do you like Oasis or do you prefer Blur? And my answer was always Pulp. Or maybe it was Suede if I was feeling especially contrary. This is Pulp's major label debut if you discount intro. Fantastic record. Now the reason I bought this is because this is a single LP reissue from 2016. It is not the 2019 double LP reissue, which I didn't buy because that kind of shit drives me nuts. Why? Because, look, this is originally as the artist intended. Five songs. Then you get up and you turn the record over. Five songs. It is not as the two LP is like two songs, then three songs, then three songs, then two songs. So you have to get up three times. Like changing the record and flipping it over every few songs, it just drives me crazy. It's not how this album originally appeared. Brian Eno's catalog was done the same way a few years ago. I bought the single LP editions, even if they don't sound quite as good. Because then you have to ask, well, why not <laughs> press every single song on its own side of vinyl? So in this case, we'd have a five LP set. If maximizing sound quality is the way to go, why not do that? Anyway, one LP, more than enough for me. I'm not gonna sacrifice my listening experience at the altar of sound quality, no way. The next store I visited was a place called Groovy Records. This is not in the city center. This is sort of behind the castle a little bit and then further again. So it's in the very, very old town where the trams run up and down. Well, the trams run all over the city, but like there seems to be an extra special concentration of trams in this area of the city. Anyway, Groovy is your kind of classic used record store. It's kind of small. It's not dirty or smelly or anything like that not like some of the ones I've been to in the UK, but it, it is compact. And there's a lot of stuff in there, especially lining the walls. It's mainly for people who are into psychedelic rock, garage, Latin music, prog, and punk. And everything has this nice little yellow sticker on it. It's instantly recognizable. The exterior of the store is one of the best I've ever seen because it has a chopper bike out front. You know, the old 70s chopper bikes with the big handles. I think there's one in the window as well. So. It definitely has this very heavy 60s and 70s retro vibe. I think that's probably the best way to describe it, right? But amongst all of that, I found this little gem. This is more my speed. Ambient techno from 91. This is Perpetual Dawn by The Orb. It cost me 10 euros and I thought I'd just take a punt. I don't know what kind of condition it's in, whether it's scratched, how noisy it is. I've got a record cleaner over here that will tell me that. We'll be reviewing that soon. But yeah, I thought this was a pretty good deal. I think this is a one-sided picture disc, actually, looking on Discogs. But I'll open that. I've not even opened it yet, because I've only been back two or three days. But um, yeah, I thought that was a good little find. And more importantly than that, I thought that Groovy Records was a good find, because it's not on the beaten track, but it's well worth checking out if you go to Lisbon to buy records and CDs. Although, actually, I've got to say, Groovy doesn't sell CDs. It's just vinyl 
and it's all used vinyl. Even further out of the city centre than Groovy Records is a place called Fleur. I think it's in the kind of slightly studenty area of town. I could be wrong, but I'm guessing there. But this CD and vinyl store, for me, was the, the, the real find of this trip. It's a fantastic store. It's a bit bigger than the others, maybe just a bit, I don't know. But it had stuff in there that just kind of ticked all of my boxes. It was just great. I bought a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to show you all of it, but I will show a few gems because there were so many 90s techno, ambient techno, electronica CDs in there that I hadn't seen for years. And I bought a few of them, like this one. This is From Our Minds to Yours, Volume 2. It's a plus eight techno compilation. So this is really straight ahead techno. And it has like Speedy J, G-Man, uh, Sisex, Cybersonic. I mean, these are all probably aliases of various better known producers. But this will sound a little bit dated, but still very good if you're into this kind of thing. This is not for the faint of heart, but it's also not on streaming services. What else did I get? Oh yeah, okay. I've been looking for this for a while. I guess I could have, I mean, you can buy any of these on Discogs, but where's the fun in that? This is Orteca's Peel Session number two. It's kind of hard to see what it is because the sleeve is all white. There is a track listing on here somewhere, but I can't really see it. Maybe it's on the inside of the booklet. But this is four tracks recorded by John Peel. I think Peel was given the job of titling those tracks. One of them's called Belifel. Just Orteca track names. So I guess you can just pull them out of your ass as John Peel did. But, you know, it's interesting. It's not available on streaming services, I don't think. It's not even part of that big compilation of early singles that Warp put out a few years ago. So I won't say this is impossible to find, but it's not easy to find. And you don't see it very often in a, in a CD store. Well, not that I've noticed anyway. So I was, yeah, happy with this. Eight euros. Pretty good. Next one. Also from the 90s. This is Biosphere's Novelty Waves, the second CD of a two CD set. So back in the 90s, in the UK, record companies would release two CD singles or two 12 inches to try and boost sales of a song. This one, I think, featured in a Levi's ad. I bought it because it's got a live track on here. I think there's a remix on here, just alternative versions. But I've also got the first one of these as well, so I guess they can sit together now as a pair. But yeah, I thought that was pretty good. And again, you don't see this very often in UCD stores, certainly not here in Berlin. This next one, though, <laughs> I haven't even thought about this album in the 25 years that has elapsed since it was released. This is by a chap called Bowment Hannant, who was very big on the sort of, I guess, offbeat electronica scene in the 90s, and then he sort of almost disappeared. This EP is called Notions of Tonality. You can see from the price, €14.50, Euros 50, that this is not easy to find. I did look on Discogs, and the second volume of this, I think, is even harder to find. Four tracks. I haven't even heard this in 25 years. I haven't even played it. I think I have a rip of it somewhere, I think. But I bought it because I'm into, you know, collecting physical formats again. I don't discriminate. CDs and vinyl are both for me, as you can tell. But I thought this was a, a rare find and a good find. Talking of vinyl, I bought this. And I bought this mainly because this artist lives just north of Lisbon. And he is Sonic Boom. Now, Sonic Boom used to be one half of Spaceman 3. And he hasn't made many solo records since Spaceman 3 disbanded in the late 80s. But this one came out a couple of years ago. And I think it's wonderful because it, it's, it's like day glow synthesizer sounds. The kind of stuff you might imagine was used by the BBC's Radiophonic Workshop in the 70s. This is called All Things Being Equal. It has heavily processed vocals that run over the top, a bit maudlin. But it's such an interesting record, especially if you're a vintage synthesizer, I won't say freak, but 
you know, somebody who's really into vintage synths. And somebody who is really into vintage synths is my buddy Alessandro Cortini. Alessandro and I have sort of become friends over the last couple of years since lockdown, since he really got into head fire gear. And he lives close to Lisbon. We went there, we had lunch, and he very kindly gave me a copy of his latest record, Scuro Chiaro, which I know pretty well. I play this loads, I love this. If you're into sort of craft work, 70s craft work, you might like this. And I wasn't cheesy enough to ask Alessandro to autograph it for me. I just, why would I do that? And he also gave me the CD actually, which is really super generous of him. So yeah, that was a fairly good haul from my four weeks in Lisbon. I will be going back next year, or maybe even the end of this year. And I've already earmarked a couple of other record stores that I wanna check out. And maybe I'll make a video about those next year at some point. But basically what I'm saying is this won't be the last time that I talk about CD and vinyl shopping in Lisbon. And in fact, if there's enough sort of demand in the comments section below, I might even make one about record shopping in here in Berlin. We've done one before, but there's so many record stores here and CD stores here that I want to cover. So if you want to see that, please let us know in the comments below. So if you like this video, please consider giving it a like down below. If you like my attitude towards, well, what would otherwise be high-end audio, but you know, <laughs> the reason we do this is to make music sound good, right? So you'll notice that my videos, especially in the last couple of years, are chock full of references to music because that's the whole point. And I don't think I could ever go back to making videos about hi-fi gear that didn't talk about music. Because really, I'm, I'm a music fan first and foremost. I really am. I've been into, I mean, this room is full of records and CDs. I've got a three terabyte hard drive over there that serves Rune and Plex. Like, it's just, I'm obsessed with music. So that led me to being kind of super interested in hi-fi gear, but not obsessed with hi-fi gear, just super into it. So I don't want to <laughs> rant anymore. So if, anyway, if you dig all of that, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.